Now let's briefly talk about what is OOPS. Okay, so OOPS is also known as the Object Oriented Programming System. Now, what it is, it is a paradigm or a pattern which is followed across different programming languages to design or to do development, right? So while writing your code, you will, you will try to follow a certain pattern so that your code is consistent and it's reusable and maintainable, right? So that's where object-oriented programming comes in, okay? Now, uh, the complete system is built upon um, two things, right? So one is objects. So, so that's why it is called object-oriented programming. And then there is class, okay? So everything is built around classes and objects in object-oriented programming. Now, what is object? It contains all the methods, variables, and attributes, okay? And what is class? So class is can be um, said as a template, right? So you need to define that template and then object will be the instance of that class, okay? So it's like in um, different examples can be formed from a class, which is also a template. Right, so we'll see uh, with the help of an example how these two can combine together to form the object oriented programming. Okay, so before that, um, just let me uh, tell you some basic concepts which are there in OOPS. Right, so there are four basic concepts which form the pillar of this object oriented programming. Right, so there is encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. Now we'll be looking at each of this um, separately in the later videos. Now, what are the advantages? As I said, you can easily maintain your programs, right, or code. You can easily modify the code and you can easily debug the code, right? So it helps in all aspects of your programming. So that's how uh, it's advantageous to use object-oriented programming in the programming languages, okay? Now, apart from Java, there are other programming languages which also support uh, object-oriented programming like C++, uh, Python, and there are a few others, okay? So um, let's go ahead and look at an example to demonstrate what is object-oriented programming, right? So um, in our project, I have created two classes. So one is um, our class, right, which is called car. So this is an example where I'm taking, creating a class called car, right? So it will act as a template from which we can then develop different car designs, right? So different companies can come here and they can use this uh, class as a template to have to create their own objects. So that's the whole idea, okay? So what this uh, class contains, so we have different attributes, as you can see, right? So we have uh, color, we have size of the car, capacity, weight, mileage, right? So these are different attributes. Now we can also have some methods here, right? So uh, like start, brake, gear, accelerate. So these are different, you can say, functionalities of the car, right? And then um, we have this uh, display car specs, right? Which displays all the properties of this car, right? The color, size, weight, capacity, and mileage, okay? So these are the different methods which are available inside this class. And these are all public, right? While these, uh, while these variables are all private, right? So these are uh, private to this class and it cannot be accessed outside this class but you can access these methods as these are public, okay? Now coming down, uh, we also have something called set, set methods for all our variables, right? So this is where you set all the different values for all these variables, right? So uh, we can set the color, we can set the size, capacity, weight, mileage. So we have written some set methods here, right? So that is what you call getters and setters in Java, right? So in order to get or set a variable, right? So these methods will help you to set, set all the different values for different properties or variables, okay? So um, that's our cla car class, which will act as a template. And then we have 
I've created another class called Hyundai, right? So this is where another company called Hyundai will try to de develop their own model based on the template, right? So this will form as an object here. Okay, so what is an object? So this is the object of the car, right? So we are creating Hyundai a car. So this is the, um, this is, this is our uh, original class, right? And then we are creating an object of the class and we are giving it a new instance of this particular class, right? So this will be the object which will contains the new object of this particular class, okay? And then using that object, we can access all the dip public methods in this class, right? So what we'll do, we will set the capacity, we'll set the color, set the weight, mileage, size, and then we'll finally display our specs, right? So this is, um, as you can see, the advantages straightforward, right? Uh, we are, there is a lot of reusability because uh, we are directly calling the methods. So all the methods are defined here. The functionality is defined here. We're just using the name of the method to set our values, right? So there is lesser code it's easy to debug and it's easy to use, right? So all the advantages of object-oriented programming. Now, um, if I execute this particular class, so what it will happen? It will show me all the properties of the car, right? So it's a perfect example of how you um, work with class and objects in you know, object-oriented programming, right? As you can see, that it is displaying all my diff different characteristics of this car, right? So this is a simple example. Uh, similarly, you can think uh, whenever you are programming in any of the languages, you can think about uh, these objects and classes, how you want to design your whole code, right? So that it can be more maintainable uh, and easier to develop and easier to debug, right? So you have to think of all these aspects whenever you are coding in any of the languages, okay? So um, in the coming up videos, we'll see uh, what are the different concepts um, in detail.